Welcome to St. Augustine this evening, the Mike Davis Show, where we're going to pon what? Pontificate. What does that even mean? Express your opinion. Oh, well, that we can do. Yeah, we can. Oh, we can do that. That's That's literally what we do. That's what we do every day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. There's less pressure now. Your word of the day is pontificate. Pontificate, yes. Cool. Thank goodness. I'm glad Troy's not here to make fun of that word. He could. He definitely could. We'll see if he makes fun of it tomorrow. He probably will. You guys will have a great show tomorrow. Yeah. I won't be here tomorrow. This is like my end you of the week. I know. I've got to travel to go visit. Hello, Barbara Jean. Uh, i got to go travel to visit family, which I'm yes. very excited about. That'll be fun. Um, but one thing you should be excited about, if you have youths, if Utes. you have kids from middle school to high school to mm-hmm. college that are trying to get in better shape for their sport next year. Mm-hmm. Seamless. Faster, quicker. Give them, uh, go to Solomon Services. Give them a call. Middle school, Monday through Friday, f- uh, 4 to 5 p.m. High school, 5 to 6 p.m. And college, 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, they've got a state-of-the-art building. All of their coaches are certified through the National Strength and Conditioning Association. Solomon Services, their goal is to get you in better shape, and they can do that. Absolutely. Opening their doors in 2008, Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency, has proudly stood by their customers through hurricanes, major floods, hail, and fires. Through these events, the agency has become a much-needed insurance resource in times of trouble and hardship. Honesty and integrity are the pillars of our core values, says owner Ashley Casey. We pride ourselves on being insurance experts while developing strategies that help our clients meet their insurance needs. They truly enjoy the relationships they have forged with you, St. Augustine. So give them a call. Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency, for all your insurance needs. Bozard Ford Lincoln in St. Augustine. Their goal is to make sure your time and experience buying a car is stress-free, fun, and enjoyable. Bozard is a family-owned Ford dealership that has been in business since 1949. Bozard Ford has been the recipient of numerous dealer awards, including being ranked number one automotive dealership in the nation by Dealer Raider. Bozard Ford has also won back-to-back President's Awards, which is the highest honor given by Ford Motor Company. Check them out today online at bozardford.com or head down to have dinner with Bo and Letty at Ford's Garage. And land title of America, whether you realize it or not, when you refinance the sale or purchase of a home, there is a title company involved. Don't get stuck with some out-of-town title company who doesn't give a crap when you're faced with challenges. Stay local and choose Land Title of America. Just call or text Stephen Collins. His number is 904-501-4481. He specializes in all types of real estate transactions. Mm -hmm. Land Title, your local title company ensuring America's land one title at a time because... Because they give a crap. Yes, they do. They're awesome sponsors. They are. Been with us since the beginning and they're still amazing. And an awesome title company. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, May 11th. Yes. Task Force Hydro 1, 5 to 8 mm-hmm. p.m. at the Mark Lance Armory. Amanda and I will be there. We will be. Yep. If you can get both of our signatures and our spouse's signatures, we'll give you a tile. <laughs> we are giving these things away. They're not even ours. <laughs> it's We're right. giving them away. I mean, They've somebody's got to clean the studio. Catered Hawaiian food, a DJ mm-hmm. uh, with music. Thank God it's not a DJ without music. Hula mm-hmm. dancers, a silent auction, and a raffle. Look, these guys are great. Task Force they Hydro are. 1. Mm-hmm. Um Water saves lives, and and these guys are saving yes. uh, first responders and vets' lives, and they're just amazing Absolutely. guys. So, uh, if you can go to the event, go to the event. Uh, we will be there. We are For looking sure. forward to be there. Yes, and this yes. weekend is Derby Day, uh, hosted Derby by Marsh Day. Creek Women's Association. It's going to so be a hat competition. I it hear it's going to be all kinds of fun. So there's great things mm-hmm. to do this weekend. So I, much fun. I actually went closer to the Derby, and I don't know if that was a smart idea, but. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And then today on the Jackie Hurd calendar, it's just May 1st. Which is? Uh, well, today's a red letter day in my life. Uh-huh. I graduated from Florida Southern College on May 1st. And I graduated nice. four years later from the University of North Florida with another degree uh, also on May 1st. So May happy 1st graduation is my graduation anniversary day. day. Yes. <laughs> so very happy to be graduated twice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So... Um, you were talking about something before the show, and it linked me to another uh, Christy Gnome's uh-huh. dog story. Yes. So I, I want people to, to comment on this because I'm a dog lover. I have a dog, mm-hmm. um, but I've also had to put a dog down. I've had yeah. to put a couple of dogs down, had to put a cat mm-hmm. down just recently. So I, I know what that's like, mm-hmm. but Christy Gnome wrote a story about shooting her own dog and, and putting it out of its misery. 
Mm -hmm. So which has started all of these other conversations. I have an underlying reason why I think the story is out there and why it's out there now. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't think anybody in the national media has the same thought because they're all saying, oh my God, it's so awful. Why would she say anything like that? Mm -hmm. Well, if you live in a city, you can't shoot your dog. I mean, I guess you could, but it's highly frowned upon. But if you're way out in the country and something bad happens to your dog, you sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands, right? And you have to do this. And yes, this is- Well, didn't she grow up on a ranch? She grew up on a ranch, still has a ranch, still has the family ranch. She had to leave college to go home because her dad died and she had to run the ranch. When you, life on a ranch is very different than a- pampered life in a city Mm -hmm. and your interaction with animals and your relationship with animals when you're working on a ranch is a little bit different. I mean, I don't love it. I wish that they had been able to rehome it, but when your closest neighbor is, you know, however, what hundreds of acres away, I don't even know. Like, and where are you going to find a neighbor that doesn't need a dog that can do the job that they wanted this dog to do like, I don't, I don't, I'm not happy about it. I want there to be another option, but this was also before there was Facebook marketplace when you could rehome a dog on the internet to someone 400 miles away. Like that, that wasn't the reality at the time. Well, and, and I, I think it's interesting people like, why would you write this? Well, because somebody knew the story was out there. Mm-hmm. Somebody knew the story was out there and the person that they knew that had the story was going to drop this the week before the election. Well, it was in her book, right? It was in her book, but mm-hmm. I'm telling you it's in the book because they knew somebody had it who was going to hold on to it until it could negatively impact her in yeah, a national better race. better to get ahead of it. And so just get ahead of it. Just get it out there and get it over and done with. And so to me, that's why it's in the book. She wrote about it as opposed to having to react to it. And everybody's having a conniption fit over this, but life on a farm is very different. Yes. Uh, life in rural America and the woods and that is very different than life in a city. And, and didn't we have 15 vets mm-hmm. within 10 miles of my home that when I have an animal that's sick, I can take them to that vet. Mm-hmm. They can care for them. And as with my cat that had to be put down, they could take care of that. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, that's the reality of city life versus country life. And then to compare country life, oh my God, you did this. Well, how far was it to the vet? What day of the week was it? Mm-hmm. What was the condition the animal was in? How much was it going to suffer getting to the vet? You're like, oh, you it would suffer. Yes, it it was suffering when it was when it had to be put down. So, and I'm I'm kind of quasi like Christy Gnome. I'm not a huge Christy Gnome fan. Yeah. I'm not a Christy Gnome hater. Um, but I think there's another reason for putting the story out right now. I don't think the fact that she grew up in a different reality than mm-hmm. most of the rest of the country yep. should um, ruin her chances of being an elected official. Um, did she continue to like, did she torture this dog or was it put down humanely? Like the dog, my understanding is the dog had, um, shown aggressive behavior. It had murdered chickens. Like it had Mm -hmm. gotten into chicken when your life, when you're living on a ranch and chickens are the difference between being able to feed your family or not, then like you can't have a dog that's just, murdering chickens for fun. Like it's, it's a slippery slope from chickens to the yeah. next animal. Yes. And like, so not, unfortunately, not every dog is mm-hmm. cut out to be a ranch dog. And unfortunately the reality of the world at the time, you couldn't just rehome a dog the way you can today. So, you know, it situation sucks. I don't like it at all, mm-hmm. but I don't think that that necessarily means she can't ever run for higher office. I mean, we had someone who admitted to eating dog that occupied the White House for eight years. So, I mean, let's keep the same energy across Mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, she says in the book that the dog was less than worthless um, and that she hated it. Uh, Obviously, the dog did things to get to that point. Yes. She didn't wake up one morning and just hate dogs. Yes. Yes. And she doesn't have a history of still hating dogs. No, she does not. And, and, And I honestly think the other reason for putting this story out now is people talk about stories about this a lot more. If she, the only other thing she could have done is save somebody's life mm-hmm. in the last few weeks, but that story would be over. It as, still wouldn't have mattered. It, it still wouldn't have mattered. People care more about animals than they do about people. So this story's out there. People are talking about her at a time mm-hmm. when Donald Trump is thinking about picking a running mate. Mm-hmm. 
Trump is one, of those, Trump right is one of those guys who lives at negative press is as good as positive press. Mm-hmm. Press is the key. Yeah. And she's getting all the press right now yeah. over this dog story. So when I look at it, I'm a bit more jaded and cynical. And I go, this is exactly what you want as a politician is your name in the press. Doesn't matter how you get there, you're but there. But I also see a pattern because when... Mitt Romney was running against a candidate who had admitted to eating dog and described how it tasted and the mouthfeel of dog meat. He got lambasted for weeks because they put a dog in a crate, like in the back of their truck or whatever, for a car ride because the dog had diarrhea. Like, what did you want him to do? Put the dog down because they couldn't ride in the car with it? Like, Mm -hmm. what were the options at the time? Um, so, I mean, it's, you, the older you get, the more you see patterns in politics and just like any time for a long time, a conservative came, well, it's still happening. Still anytime happening. a conservative comes out, um, with a chance at a landslide victory, then suddenly there's an accusation of, um, inappropriate behavior. I mean, that took Herman Cain out of out of contention. They tried to pull that with um, Clarence Thomas. There's, you see this pattern repeat itself over and over and over again. And now here we see the same pattern from Mitt Romney happening to Christy Nome. It's, it is what it is. Meanwhile, we still don't have flight logs for a certain plane. Yeah, and we don't have, we don't have flight logs. We don't have the guest book. We don't, know what's going on with that certain son of a current president who, you know, discarded a weapon on school property and all sorts of inappropriate messages to people of legal and non-legal age Mm -hmm. and money that may or may not have come from government coffers paying for women. I mean, there's all sorts of questions that actually affect my life. Um, that I would really rather have an answer to. And I get that life on a ranch is hard. Yes. So anyway, I don't think that, uh, I I don't see as much of an issue here. And I do think it's all about just getting her name in the press. Yeah. It's all about getting her name in the press. Speaking of. Barbara Jean has a May Day anniversary as well. I know Barbara Jean. She won a red ear slider turtle (laughs) on May Day. I think hers (laughs) trumps mine. Yeah. Yeah. Turtles are cool. Turtles are cool. They're cool. Uh, May 11th is Surf Quest. Yes. Surfing event at Mary, Mary Street, Street Ramp, Ramp in Crescent Beach, 1 to 4. 1 to 4 p.m., which you'll be announcing. I'll be announcing all next week. Well, on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because Tuesday I have my planning and zoning duties. Mm-hmm. So. So Barbara Jean has questions. She's not happy, and I'm I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that she's not happy. Um, did the pup get proper training? I mean, animals that are on ranches typically are trained from infancy to do what they need to do. So I'm assuming this was not their first rodeo with a dog. And um, they keep referring to it as a 14 month old dog, which I feel like is emotionally manipulative because people think like baby, because they're describing it in in months. months. Yes, But a dog is an adult at a year. Mm -hmm. And so this was an adult sized and it was an adult dog at 12 months. It's an adult. So there. this is definitely a tactic to make you think of like, oh, a little puppy was just abused. Yes. Um, why would she take him there and shoot him with a shotgun? Like, So she's got questions. I get it. Um, it's, it's not a pleasant story, but like I said, life on a ranch isn't always pleasant. No. All right. Speaking of unpleasantness, mm-hmm. uh, mobs. Yes. At college campuses. Yes. So it's finals time. I know when I was taking finals, the only time I would take mm-hmm. time away from finals was to go play um, par three golf. Yeah. To take a break. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually it involves stopping at a store across the street and picking up a 12 pack yeah. to walk around the par three course with mm-hmm. my buddies and have some beers. Yeah. Um, that was the only break that I had um, because we were busy trying to get out of college mm-hmm. and get a job. Because yes. we didn't want to go live back at home with our parents. Loved our parents, but we didn't want to go back and live at home. The, so, The Lord of the Rings movies came out during my winter finals. Mm-hmm. And so that was, we would always try and get our studying done so that we could go um, the midnight showing of premiere night for the Lord of the Rings movies. So that was my winter finals tradition. 
So did it make you more of a nerd to study before going to see Lord of the Rings? Or if you hadn't studied, went to go see Lord of the Rings at a normal time and then studied from midnight until 6 a.m.? Well, my Which parents... Which was the bigger nerd play? My parents knew that I was going to the final, so had... Or going to the movie. So had I not um, gotten good grades on the final, then I would have been in trouble. Yep. So I did what I had to do. Yes. Yeah, I, I just... I, I Everybody's got to do their own thing. I was, uh, where was I? The kids were younger. We usually, a couple of years, my sister was in town. She was still in college, right? So we would all, we'd all get together and go. And the scariest thing was watching Ethan um, during the second movie, uh-huh. The Two Towers, mm-hmm. um, whenever uh, Gollum was on. Because like the second or third time he saw it, he could do the whole Gollum thing. Yeah. And just watching his big old eyes sitting on my lap. Watching Gollum was just too much. Yeah. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he, I mean, he had it down to a T. Yeah. My son can do an excellent Gollum. Yeah. It's, like, it's a little creepy. Yes. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we had a much more wholesome finals experience than the finals experience that's going on right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be going through that kind of finals experience right now. No, I can tell you that. Not at all. Yeah. I thought it was wrong to do take you remember- over buildings on different places that you didn't own. Well, we've heard for the past like three years, right, that you're not allowed to. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. You're I not thought that to was take the rule. Over yeah. Businesses and or spaces that you're not welcome. I, I, and I, I get that college kids think that they're the smartest group on the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of us that have been around a little longer have something called experience, mm-hmm. and that trumps feelings. Um, in most that's of the world, ageist. you know, yes. that's ageist I to fully point that get out. that. I get it. I do. I knew when mm-hmm. I said it, I would get, cause there are some great young people out there yeah. that are doing amazing things. There's some young people out there that think the whole world revolves around them. Mm-hmm. Having said that, there are some great older people out there in their fifties mm-hmm. who uh, contribute and help 50s and don't, plus. and don't <laughs> preach yeah. and are great people. And there are other ones just like, man, I do not need a lesson every single time I yeah. run to you. So I, I fully get it on both sides. Um, I remember what it was like to be 20 something and be told what to do by somebody. It's like, I, okay, thanks. So someone decided to try and um, to teach a lesson to the UCLA protesters. Oh, is this the person that woke them up? Well, this is the person that um, they assembled a large screen television. I do remember. I read this too. Yeah, That just is playing the events of October 7th, mm-hmm. the, the attack on October 7th on a loop. Yep. So like, okay, this is what you're fighting for. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I mean, what are your ta- What are your thoughts on this? Like, how do you feel about this reaction to the protests? Uh, you had that. And then somebody also woke them up with good morning, Vietnam. The Robin Williams, yeah. uh, it's like four in the morning or something trying to wake up the, I, it was yes. Well, then there was the person that, um, so there were counter protesters that saw that there were signs all around the perimeter of the pro Palestine protesters area that said no bananas. Mm-hmm. And so they just brought a ton of bananas to their area. And we're just like opening them and eating them and like rubbing. Evidently, there's some banana allergy yep. on the pro-Palestinian side. So then there was like this whole meltdown about like that there was terroristic behavior to bring bananas into an open air space. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're inside a like confined space sharing air. Uh, it, it some of the stuff I have seen. Uh, I don't know if you it's saw the wild stuff f- footage from uh, UNC mm-hmm. Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. So uh, somebody was trying to take down the American flag, put up a different flag, and a group of students went and defended the flag and held mm-hmm. the flag up off the ground. Oh, I saw that. It was like yes. um, frat boys. It was holding, frat boys. Frat boys holding their own. Yes, every I mean, once a in a while, frat image. boys are like, you know what? We can handle this. We got this. This image reminds me of something. What does it remind you of? It reminds me of the, was it um, the Rudy. World War II monument? Oh, yeah. It reminds me of the World War II monument. Uh, the Here, let me get the monument cord. for the uh, Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. Mm-hmm. Yes. Little different context because lots of people sl- died at Iwo Jima. Context. But yes, yes, I get the, it, it but does have a semblance it to it. It bears a resemblance. It bears a resemblance. There we go. Get you. Get I you plugged in. I was just curious what fraternity uh, 
held the flag up. <laughs> I love the caption, toxic masculinity at work. Is that the caption? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, I get it. It's a it's joke. A joke. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. It's a joke, Mike. Okay. We call that a joke. All right, okay. Sorry, nothing gets past me. <laughs> Nothing yeah. gets past me today. There's video. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of wild stuff going on in the world, on college campuses, and maybe these people should be more like me and studying and watching Lord of the Rings. I, I'm glad people want to be involved, but I just think they should do a little more research before they just taking should. one thing and running with it. Mm -hmm. um, because for because me, someone on X said it was cool. Well, I, you know, it's like the people last week we talked about, oh, what are we here for? Oh, maybe we should get better educated about that. Yeah, so maybe we should Google search. Maybe we should Google that. Yeah. Everybody liked my catch, 50 plus. I, <laughs> as somebody that's older than 50, I wasn't offended. <laughs> Again, I held the flashlight for my I dad. I got your backs, y'all. Again, I held the flashlight for my dad, so it's yeah. hard to offend me. I'm guessing... There were choice words. Well, if you, if you were a young person and you ever had to hold the flashlight for your dad, you didn't hold it exactly. You never hold it right. It. No, you, you never get held it right. And you always oh. got yelled at, and your that was your dad's job was to yell at you and toughen mm -hmm. you up, and it yeah. worked. So yeah, uh, my mom did that to me. I never held it right. Pi kappa phi. Okay. Gesundheit. Pi kappa phi. No. I, I was at a college that all of our fraternities and sororities got disbanded before mm -hmm. I got to go. They've raised, <laughs> they raised over $50,000 on a GoFundMe I bet page. they did. Uh, I bet you it'll be. No, I think it's 100000 now. Uh, well, this story is, yeah, yeah. It probably is, because this story is several hours old. So this story that I'm seeing is $100,000. Uh, this one was from 3.34 p.m. Today is when it was updated. It was originally written at one fifty four. So if they're if they're at 100000 that's 50000 every couple of hours. Pulling it up. Yeah, they're they're gonna be one hundred twenty seven thousand. Now, do you $496. know? There are guys in that That's fraternity that are thinking, think what we can do with our philanthropy with this money. There are other guys in that fraternity. Someone is doing Coors Light Math. Yes. How many <laughs> kegs can we buy for yes. how many years with yeah. this money? Yep. Right. So there's, believe me. How many uh, cans of Natty Light? There's a wide and uh, varied <laughs> range of opinions about this. One, what can we do with the kegs? And the other, well, what can we do for our philanthropy? Yeah. Somewhere in the middle, uh, their goals will meet. Yeah. I yeah. love the title of the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Pi Kappa Phi, men defended their flag, throw them a rager. <laughs> yes. This is a rager abroad this is like the best spring break trip ever <laughs> uh, I, you you just first of all congratulations to those students That's that great. stood up right i mean gosh darn it if they'd been alive in the 60s some of them would have been over in vietnam yeah right so i mean it's a it's a completely different time um but thank goodness that, that the range of facial expressions yeah. on the on the boys Somewhere faces out there, there's funny. some parents that are really proud yeah well <laughs> good thing some parents are proud of what's going on with yeah. At their kids' college. Yes. And their kids' behavior at college. Mm -hmm. Like some of the facial expressions are great. Like there's the guy in the blue shirt with his phone up, like, <laughs> yeah, cry harder, losers. And then there's the guys that are like definitely into it. And then there's this guy, the brunette with the white t shirt that's yes. like, oh, my friends made me be here. <laughs> Great. I, I, I th yeah, some of that There's is scary right here. And there's some that just went, hey, <laughs> we're making other people mad. Let's yeah. do it anyway. I don't I don't care about the flag, but it's making the right people you, mad. And you, they've been bothering me for a week and a half. You guys want to study or you want to go make people mad? I was gonna make people <laughs> mad. I think that's what Blue Shirt over here is thinking. No, like, I just Oh, look uh, at him yeah. cry. Poor Bobby <laughs> has to give a shout out to UNC. That's gonna hurt Bobby. Yeah, missed that yeah. news about UNC. Yeah, they did something good. <laughs> That's the first time Bobby's ever said that. Uh oh. Oh, it's true. Ask Bobby. <laughs> what happened? First time. Yeah. No, I think you're going to see a, a, a lot of things like that. And I think people are kind of like, I think they're over it, right? They're, do you understand that atrocities were committed? Not some people did some things. Atrocities yeah. were committed yeah. on October the 7th. And when you yell things that uh, may or may not lead to the genocide of an entire mm -hmm. race of people and a religious group, it's just not a good, healthy thing. That's yeah. not good for you. It's not good for any. And, and if you're in a group that's yelling that mm -hmm. and that group is uh, targeted by the country that you're defending, you ought to seriously think about what you're 
what your kind of thought process is. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe you look into the various organizations that you support. Mm-hmm. And don't just look at what they say about themselves, but look at um, look at what their supporters say and look at what their detractors say and then figure out where you stand in that because not everyone is good because they say they're good and not every side is, is right because they say it's right. Um, this is a lot of intersectionality, uh, the roots of that poisonous tree. Mm-hmm what a lot of this is it's just we've decided who is right and who is wrong based on our american social justice interpretation of events and that may or may not be what is actually true perception mm-hmm. you're saying perception is reality mm, i'm saying perception might not be reality <laughs> Huh? What your professor has said. Okay, you're going, that <laughs> perception is not. Yeah. Okay, I get you now. I was like, wait a minute, where's the man going? What you've been told perception? is the right answer might Which not be. Which perception are we talking about? Might not be reality. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, we know a good therapist. We'll get you over mm-hmm. this moment of having to say something nice about UNC. We'll get you there. Never again, we'll Bobby. All Swear get never this again. Together. <laughs> never again, Bobby. Sorry, man. Yeah, just can't do it. <laughs> Yeah. I appreciate your intellectual um your intellectual honesty though. I, I do too. I appreciate the the fact that you recognize something. Credit where credit's due. Yes. Uh, also I'll be curious to see if anybody has to pay for the damages that was caused across all these campuses with these protests. Yeah, we will. I will be I will tuition's be, going up. Well, that is how everyone's gonna pay, right? <sighs> so if you're one of the students that didn't cause any damage, you're going to be paying for the damage. Which I would be, regardless of the protest, as soon as they start damaging my campus, and I know that's going to raise my my cost, I'm mad. Like, I don't care whether I agree with you or mm-hmm. not. Like, there's been times when I have gone out and I have protested things, and we left the area cleaner than we found it. Like, we literally left it better than we found it when we were protesting. But I can't support you if you're if you're destroying property and if you're making life harder. So for that everyone. begs the question, were you, were you protesting or were you just a glorified cleanup crew? Mm, I was protesting, <laughs> but just, I was blessing the area. Too. I'm just, I think if you have respect for the area you're in, you do pick up the things, mm-hmm. even if you didn't leave things there because you don't want to be, they can be like trashed there when you get there, but it's like, I don't want this to be associated yeah. with me with my leave. I'm picking this up. So I was at a protest in Washington, DC in 2010 and we toured the area the day before, and it's a city, there's litter. Uh, when we left the, the field, so we were around the, the mall, yep. uh, Washington Monument, steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and around the reflection pool. Um, when we left the area, the trash cans were just piled high. People brought their own trash bags so that they could collect the trash that they brought in and more in their surrounding area. And the mall was pristine when we left. Yes. It was wild. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. That's that's, the way you make an impression. That's the way you get people on your side. It's the way, yes. You don't block traffic and you don't make life annoying for them. Yeah. Try to make life better for people. And they go, I want to be that person. Yeah. I don't want to be the annoying person. I want to be the person that made my life Mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of annoying people, and I don't even know if she's annoying that Jill Stein. Who? She is the Green Party, Green Party presidential, presidential candidate. candidate. This week, April the 28th, she was arrested uh, at Washington University um, in uh, St. Louis. Oh, yeah. Uh, she was there to, to um, uh, try to get the school to divest from any ties to Israel or the, or the war that's going on in Gaza. And I think this is a brilliant move on her part. Because she finally got herself in a headline. She got herself in the headlines. (laughs) She got herself in a headline with a demographic group she is courting and a demographic group that is mad at the person and group that they would normally vote for. Yeah. These people would normally vote Democrat and would normally vote for Joe Biden as the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. But they are mad at Joe Biden. They're mad at the Democratic Party. And here comes the Green Party candidate getting arrested supporting them. Mm -hmm. So there are certain states that will be in play 
because of how um, uh, people that have relocated here from the Middle East vote. Yeah. And also how uh, Jewish people in the United States vote who were traditionally and have always been a very democratic block of voters. Mm -hmm. It will be very interesting to see where that demographic shifts as you get closer to and through the election. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just listening to um, Don Jr. explaining about a recent campaign event that he had attended. And um, I think demographics are going to be really interesting this election. I think it's going to be the strangest demographics we've seen in our lifetime. Yeah. I think groups that typically vote a certain way, Mm -hmm are not going to vote that way. Yeah. And and we really desperately need the current voting blocks to realign in some way, shape, or form. So the parties have to work harder to attract voters. Because mm-hmm. for the longest time, certain groups have been attached to certain parties. Yeah, And if that changes, and it kind of uh, changes, um, it's a seismic change, mm-hmm. then that's good for the country. Because then all of a sudden, both parties got to start figuring out, well, who supports us? What do they support? And yeah. how do we go court them? as opposed to taking uh, certain groups for granted on both sides. Yeah. Republicans have taken evangelical Christians for granted for a long time. And they have sat out of elections and they for a sat long out time. Of, they sat out of the Mitt Romney election. Mitt Romney, a lot yep. of them sat out of Donald Trump 2016. Yes, they did. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting to see what is happening with demographics. And... I think what makes it more interesting is a ton of people on CNN and MSNBC have been like loving this whole demographic shift that they've been projecting for a really long time and laughing. They're the ones that coined the phrase demographics is destiny. And I don't know that that's going to work out for them. No. The old dodgeball line. No, I, I, that's, it's a uh, bold strategy, bold cotton. strategy cotton. Well, the problem mm-hmm. is that you're always kind of waiting for that to happen, mm-hmm. but things change, yeah. right? Um, you know, nine 11 changed voting trends. Mm-hmm. Uh, October the 7th will change those. Um, uh, COVID changed voting trends, mm-hmm. right? People realign. Well, the Supreme to court decision on gay marriage that changed voting trends mm-hmm. because I mean, people that were, LGBT and their allies were anti-conservative for a long time just because of the marriage issue. And once that was taken off the table and that was no longer a point of difference between the parties, we've seen a lot of organizations pop up um, from the LGBTQ community that are more conservative. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting what you see happening. Yeah, and I think uh, African American voters that at 90, 95% have traditionally voted uh, Democratic uh, for the Democratic Party. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see that shift. Hispanic voters were more traditionally voting Democrat. They are shifting in an even bigger, quicker fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be very interesting to see where those groups kind of settle down. Mm-hmm. And I think some of those realignments of those groups are going to drive politics for probably the next two or three election cycles before another event happens that then drives us in a different direction. Or we could be wrong. <laughs> we just see the exact same thing over and over again. Lord, I hope not. That's really boring not. to watch. <laughs> I know. It's incredibly boring to watch. Yeah. And Barbara Jean says to every anti-Semitic person, she wants to know um, why their racism is allowed. I would say every racist would probably give you the answer, regardless of who they hate, that um, I'm not racist, I'm just right. I'm pretty sure that's their mindset. Well, let's be glad we don't know their mindset. I don't. I don't know. I'm glad I don't know. That's why I've had to get restraining orders against people, because (laughs) I refuse to be friendly with people. Uh, For the record, I am not one of the restraining orders. Obviously not. We're sitting next to each other. We're sitting next to each other. Unless yeah. I'm just a hologram and this is all an illusion. Oh, God. <laughs> Please don't take us there. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, so Mike Rowe for a long time has been, uh, we're talking about college. Love Mike right? Rowe. It's been preaching that colleges um, suck. They, no. they suck. They're, not that they suck, but that they're not necessarily where everyone needs to go. They, they cost too much money. Yeah. And for uh, some people, it's probably not the best path forward in life. Mm-hmm. So there are two articles um, that came out. One, um, uh, Gen Z opts for blue collar jobs that are safe from being replaced with AI. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of jobs yeah. that are on the line with AI. 
Turns out being a BuzzFeed article writer and aggregator isn't something that's a lock to keep in the human realm. Or a sports writer at Sports Illustrated. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Apparently sports writing is pretty easy mm -hmm. if they give that to AI first. Well, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of speculation about whether AI and mm -hmm. um, these like chat bot AI girlfriend things are going to kill the online porn industry. <laughs> I and it's like a cockroach. I don't think you can kill that industry. <laughs> Z. I, I think that there's a lot of, uh, of those kind of changes that are going to be bad for us that are going to still continue to filter through. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I think you have um, the AI generated stuff is not only that, I literally can see a time when families have their own secret coded password mm -hmm. because somebody calls up and says, I'm Louie uh, and I'm stuck here. Amanda quickly send me $50 mm -hmm. or $500 in Venmo and you can't tell the difference between that AI image and your husband. Well, they say you should already have a password with your kids because, you know, people can online stalk you and know who your kids are and they can be like, oh, well, Amanda sent me. I'm here to pick you up. And because you post where mm -hmm. your kids do activities or where your kids do school, then, you know, someone could theoretically do that. And so your kid's supposed to ask for the password. But can you imagine uh, everybody is now going to be in a James Bond or a spy thriller episode uh -huh. because you're going to greet your family members, even in public, yeah. to Let's make sure it's code. really them with phrases. Yeah. It's well, if you're face to face, you yeah. can tell. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think that's coming too. Yeah, have you, think have we're you gonna not be Blade watched, Runner? have you not watched uh, any of the Mission Impossibles? No. They pretty much fake people's faces. Who is the lead star in Mission Impossible? Jeremy Renner, mm -mm. Emily Blunt, mm. she's not in any of them. Is um, she not? I don't no, know. she's not. Uh, that guy uh, who was Maverick, who was really cool. Oh, Tom Cruise. What's he? What do we call you him? You and cool? Troy Blevins are just haters. I just I can't with him. You're just haters. I can't with him. Somebody nailed him the other day. I can't remember which star it was, but it was a comment. I'll about, reserve my joke. <laughs> I, 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 yes, please don't say that. It was, it was basically a comment of, um, I think it was Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. I yeah, wouldn't surprise I me. I think it was Mark Wahlberg and it was basically a comment of, uh, he, somebody asked him about Tom Cruise. Said, I never compare myself to someone who doesn't have a real religion. And it was, <laughs> you're really Marky Mark. I mean, you went there. Oh, well, I'm sure that Mark Wahlberg and Tom Cruise have had a contentious relationship in the past because, what I've heard was, you know, when you're in Scientology, um, like you're expected to recruit on set. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with someone, so like Leah Remini was very pressured to try and get Kevin James to become a Scientologist. And she's like, he's a strong Catholic. I'm not, he already has a faith. I'm not going to try and undermine his faith or take his faith away from him. She's like, I'll King happily of, talk King of Queens. King of Queens. That, yeah. yeah okay. Her co-star on King mm -hmm. of Queens. Yep. She's like, I'll happily talk to someone who doesn't have a faith or is looking for a faith, but I'm not going to try and undermine someone's faith. And so she got in trouble yeah. because she wouldn't. Um, so I imagine that there's a contentious behind the scenes relationship mm -hmm. between someone as outspoken as uh, Mark Wahlberg is about his faith. And, and I think Keely got the was, quote closer to correct than I did. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's, she's a little closer to the quote. I, mine was a little more biting, but I think hers is more accurate. I don't know him. We go to different churches. Yeah. I, I, I think <laughs> that's pretty, she, I, I, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty um, passive aggressive. That's a nice yes. little backhanded. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think that um, Mark Wahlberg would be someone that, Tom Cruise would hire for his production company because because uh, he's tougher than him. <laughs> well, they're about the same height. <laughs> he might be an inch taller than him. So uh, how tall are they? Tom Cruise is tiny. Uh, there was a skit with Jack Black and um, Will Ferrell making fun of different people in Hollywood. I think it was at one of the Oscars performances, uh -huh. Oscars or Golden Globes or something. And they they ripped so Tom on a, Cruise is five seven. Yeah, they ripped on a couple of tough guys. Uh huh. And then they said, uh, Mark Wahlberg, uh, we got nothing to say about you. We're still afraid of you, right? It was just. <laughs> I don't know if I'm afraid of Mark Wahlberg. He's 5'8". See, he's an inch taller than him. I told you. <laughs> I, 
I don't trust any of those heights. <laughs> I was six one in the basketball yeah. program my senior year. Well, I'm guessing that Tom Cruise is probably like five 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 six, and Mark Wahlberg is probably like five six and a half, five seven. Either way, he fell in an inch taller. Oh, I, I I fully <laughs> I fully get the yeah. dark thing. But anyway, um, we what got us off of this was, um. We got talking about AI. Barbara um, Jean flight suits are like the, they are the Spanx for men. All men look good in a flight suit. It's not just Tom Cruise. I'm sorry. Spoken by someone who has dated someone in a flight suit. He didn't wear a who flight suit. Who wasn't attractive when he met her at the beach without the flight suit. <laughs> he was not in a flight suit. He was in the Air Force, but he didn't wear a flight yeah. suit because he wasn't a pilot. He was too tall to be mm -hmm. a pilot. Mm-hmm. He was Tom Cruise's height reversed, so he was six five. Okay, <laughs> all right, um, six four actually, to be honest. Yes. Um, so, and Keely does point out that an inch makes all the difference. <laughs> when you're oh, Tim's here. Yeah. How are you having? Tim's. How are you enjoying Taylor Swift's new album, Tim? Yep. Tim has been listening to Taylor Swift for hours today. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, I just. I think this the AI right is one thing, and Gen Terrifying. Z, yeah, they're opting for blue collar jobs as some is a way of going. Hey, I don't want to get opted out of this. Yeah. Two, I think um, when you work with your hands and you spend a lot of time doing physical labor, I think you have a different appreciation for mm -hmm. how you earn money than if you're sitting behind a desk. I don't mean that somebody sitting behind a desk isn't working hard, mm -hmm. but it's a different kind of thing. And and in some ways, it, it's you know. I've done both. I've worked in the field as, uh, in our company and I've worked behind the desk in the company. I'm more mentally tired after working behind the desk, but I feel like I got less things done sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in the field. It's like, okay, we were going to do this today. And when mm -hmm. we got that done, you're like, yep, we got it done today. It was very clear. We were going to get X number of things accomplished. And if we got that, you're like, man, I feel really good about that. If you didn't like, damn it, we got to come back tomorrow and work even harder or we're going to well, have to work overtime. So I think this shift has started changing with the millennials. Mm -hmm. uh, because the millennials, a lot of us went straight to college. We got a very expensive degree that we then didn't use or use for a very short period of time. And then a lot of millennials started rediscovering old ways of doing things and artisanal, everything became a mantra, artisanal cheese, artisanal bread, artisanal fabric, like artisanal, everything became a thing with millennials. You know what wasn't a thing? Artisanal work. <laughs> it's work to make things in an artisanal <laughs> fashion. Um, so I think it the movement kind of started with millennials and started going viral on yeah. the internet with millennials. And Gen Z have grown up with viral videos of all that is old is new again. And so they're also seeing that college is a scam and their entire lives college has been kind of revealed as ridiculous and a scam. And so why would they do that when you can make money going viral, like woodworking with your hands mm -hmm. using no power tools? Yeah. Like I'd rather do that than go to college and work off $80,000 in debt. If I'm lucky um, in an office all day, never seeing the sun. Mm -hmm. If I could work from home and make videos and create something like I'd rather do that. I don't, I, don't, I, I look at, I, I know people that are content creators, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you are a content creator, sir. What? We are currently creating content. Yeah, but we don't, it's not, this is not our end all be all job. This is us at the end of the day, enjoying time with our Speak friends. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forget your other job I'm is teaching millennial. kids. I forget your other I, job. No, that's my volunteer opportunity. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then my business. Yes. Tutoring. Uh, yeah. There's a whole discussion of whether or not Tim's uh, liver has walked out on him. Uh, do they drink in Scientology? I hear, I, no, 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 uh, no, no. Tim, uh, interview a liver from a Scientologist who's tired of not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise is allowed to murder anyone, so just, you know, get on his good side. He'll find you a donor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Taylor Swift will give you a, give you a, a scholarship for a new liver. Uh, I don't know if she does that. I am sure we could really create a lovely that. video package yeah, and get her attention. Yeah. Especially now that she's dating a very heavy drinker that so obviously won't it, need is any it liver. Is it possible that Tim's liver told Tim he was just mean? Oh. A la the Taylor Swift song. No, no. His liver said, we're never, never, never getting back together. Ah, different Taylor Swift song that I have no idea what it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, Tim and I both need to get on that list. <laughs> That's great.
Ah, you uh, guys are young and have time. Tim <laughs> didn't stumble out like Mayberry's Otis. <laughs> There's a lot of good comments on great Tim comments. today. Uh, there are, uh, Love an, you, Tim. Another story about students rejecting colleges like Columbia, mm-hmm. Yale, Harvard, mm-hmm. to attend schools like Clemson. Yay! What do you have to say about the de- um, impending demise of Clemson because of students from Yale? I'm very sad. Clemson's a little on the woke side anyway, and that kind of breaks my heart. I hope that they... I hope they knock it off and mm-hmm. get their heads out of the um, proverbial tiger's rump, but we'll see. Hopefully they do. I, I hope so. I don't, I don't think Clemson is as captured as the Ivy League, but I think all college campuses, short of small, independent, um, largely faith-based organizations are captured, but Notre Dame is Notre Dame, whatever you want to call it. University, it is captured. I mean, it, that was that was a big Catholic institution, and it was a stalwart in faith higher learning, um, faith based higher learning. But uh, no, no, that's that's not where you want to be if you want to learn actual I, Catholic morals and values. I, I was raised Catholic. I am amazed today at some of the things that uh, people oh, yeah. within the Catholic Church say about Catholicism. Yeah. Based on how it was taught to me when I was growing up. Like based on what the Bible and the prayer book says? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I am like slightly Like those amazed. original sources? Saying it's right or wrong, not saying yeah. I agree with it. I'm just amazed at how um, it has evolved, so yes. to speak. Yes. After not having evolved for thousands of years. Yeah. Well, there was an active, there was an active, um, campaign intended to subvert the churches, Mm -hmm. especially in this country, because the churches kept this country in the straight and narrow for a long time. So, Well, our founding fathers believed that you couldn't have a democracy without a faith-based system. Mm -hmm. That if you didn't have a faith-based system and you had a democracy, it would not last. Not faith-based, but Judeo-Christian. Yes. This, our form of government was instituted for a Judeo-Christian population Mm -hmm. or at least people that were respectful of Judeo-Christian um, morals and ethics. Um, so it's we're seeing what happens when the the scales tilt away from it. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing so far. Uh, I love Keely's comment. Keely might get comment of the month, and it's oh, only May first. Yes. Whenever someone uh, posts about coming from an Ivy League school, it's where really is fun that, to pretend where like is you've never heard of it. community college from? I love it. <laughs> it's great. Keely, that is amazing. <laughs> I did legitimately ask someone um, when I was in college, and they told me that they attended Columbia at a bar. I was like, oh, you're at USC, Columbia, South Carolina? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they were not happy about that at all. <laughs> Listen, I, I think it's... Didn't ask me out. I don't know why. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think that is the, the way to do that. Because it is... Oh, I'm sorry. You know, for the rest of us, we don't care. It just depends on how you treat us. Yeah. If you treat us well, we respect you for that. If you don't treat us well, well, you're just another Ivy League person that we yeah. don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I don't need to be told where you went to school. Just treat people right that are around you. Yeah. Just be nice. Yes. Be respectful, be nice. And, and it's not like we walk around with our diplomas tattooed on our foreheads. So, like, calm down. Yes. <laughs> Nobody cares. And the only people that notice that you're wearing a Harvard tie are other people from Harvard. And they probably know what your rank was in your class. So they probably don't respect you either. <laughs> I, yeah, there's just so many bad things yeah. that have there. I, uh, on a completely different note. Uh, now for something totally different. Yes. And now for some, uh, President Biden has proposed new capital gains. Uh, do, Great. Yes. Normally this would be a question on Thursday. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to be here. But we're not going to be here tomorrow. You're leaving but me alone. I will retread this in two weeks. So mm-hmm. this is an opportunity for you to get a freebie. All right. So if I remember. the new proposal for capital gains. So if you were to buy a piece of property. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say you bought it for $100,000. You sell it for $200,000. So $100,000 is your capital gain. Let's Mm -hmm. keep this simple. Yeah. Right. Uh, Joe Biden's new capital gains uh, rate would be 44.6%. 
<laughs> which means you would spend F right off. <laughs> you would send four hundred and forty six thousand dollars. Four hundred and forty six thousand. I'm sorry, forty four thousand six hundred. Sorry, I tried to keep it yeah. simple and I got to millions. Yes. Um, 100,000. You'd send 44,000, almost 45,000. Right. To off. the federal government who took no risk, who didn't yeah. sacrifice to mm -hmm. make the extra money. And, and all of these transactions were purchased with post tax dollars. Yep. Uh, also, I'm a fair tax girly myself. Mm -hmm. I really prefer the fair tax. Um, so that, that would be me. This is the highest it's been since its inception in 1920. Capital gains? Capital gains. It would be the highest capital gains. Well, yes. I heard people talking about and um, didn't rewind and clarify, but they were talking about unrealized capital gains. They're trying to tax unrealized capital gains. So do you know what an unrealized capital gain that is? That means you haven't actually sold the property yet. So let's say you bought stocks at $100,000. Uh -huh. They're currently valued at $200,000. Yeah. That's an unrealized gain. Because you haven't sold it. Because you, so you don't have it. that money in your pocket. But if they want to start taxing that, it is going to tank the stock market and the real estate market. Why it would is, anyone no invest one, with anything? You might as well take your money out of everything and put it in a can in the back of the yeah, yard. Put it in your mattress. Call Pete Melfi. He can tell you to do this. <laughs> Pete Melfi will soon be making videos of how to bury cash well, in the back of the yard. He'll loan out his dog. Yes. To dig the hole for you. I'm Pete Melfi. And if you've lost all your money in the stock market, <laughs> do I have a place for you to hide it? Right here in this can. And... In 60 seconds, I'm going to give you an idea how to do it, but you're going to have to buy the how-to video for me to completely well, show you how to bury your can in the backyard so nobody else can find it. The only people that would invest in the stock market are people that need to take a loss so that they can have a write-off. Mm -hmm. And so they would be like the Broadway show, The Producers. They'd be investing I, in the worst possible stocks just so they could get a loss, I, just to get a tax break. I've got the greatest tax idea. Mm -hmm. I think all of us as U.S. citizens should claim our percentage of the national debt each year that was accumulated during the year, right? Mm -hmm. We are investors in the United yeah. States government, but it is losing money because it's having mm -hmm. to borrow money. So shouldn't we be able to deduct from our taxes mm -hmm. the percentage of the debt that other people voted upon That'd us? That'd be great. Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, I think my family owes a trillion dollars. So well, we could easily just write that off. I think... That if there's no legally passed budget, like actual budget, mm -hmm. that has gone through both houses and been signed by the president, if there is no budget, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Yes. Like, why am I paying you taxes? You mm -hmm. don't have a budget. You haven't laid out what you're going to spend it on. Yeah. So my consent is not involved in how you're spending it. If you don't have a budget and I can either vote you in or vote you out based on your decisions uh, on that budget, I shouldn't have to pay you taxes. I just love the idea that we're all investors in the Pound U.S. government. Sand. And if the U.S. government doesn't make a profit, then it lost money. Then I have to share in that and I have to be able to deduct the loss. Yeah. Bobby mentioned that California has suggested that they want to tax people moving away. They're not suggesting they're doing it. There is a tax. If you're a business and you leave California, you have to pay an exit tax. What are you going to do? Stop me from returning to your God awful state? Like, Cali don't pay. California what are they going to do? California used to be a cool place. Everything hip Ugh. happened in California. And then all of a sudden, crazy. I'm beginning started to believe that was all marketing. No, no, no. There were some really cool hip things, right? Surfing came out of California. I know it started in Hawaii, but <laughs> it became go. big, right? I mean, all these really cool things. The mm -hmm. music scene, the Hollywood scene, all that stuff came out. You know, it was great. And then they went a little wacky. And then it's not been a so little, good. Well, a I, little wacky. I I was saying they we went. Understand. I didn't say they just didn't jump right into insanity, but they're there now. Uh, they're 100 percent there now. There it's funny, like an old in Bob Hope era movies, they'll make jokes about like, well, they're either crazy or they're Democrats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, what happened to Hollywood? It's wild. Uh, Hollywood did a 180 in the, in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Started in the 70s, 60s yeah, and 70s, sure. and then it completely changed. And It became uh, obvious you, in the you, 80s You had um, conservative actors... Um, you had liberal actors who didn't really voice an opinion, but they began voicing those opinions in the 60s and the 70s. Mm -hmm. By the 80s and 90s, they were becoming the dominant voices. You were beginning to lose some of the more conservative voices in Hollywood, and they're all pretty much gone now.
Yeah. The conservatives figured out, I'm not living in Hollywood. I'm moving to another state. And if I never work again, at yeah. least I'll be happy. Yep. How bad is your business if somebody who's really good at it says, I'd rather not do that and be happy in another state? Mm. Barbara Jean wants to know why California doesn't secede. It's because they need money from the federal government. Yep. Because they can't tax enough. Uh, if California to exist. were threatened to secede, I don't know which would cause the earthquake. The people rushing to get out of the state or the people rushing to get in for the benefits that are there while they're there, yeah. right? Good I mean, luck. you literally have people going, we're going to California to get the benefit. Are you going to work? No. Are you going to do anything? No. But this is going to be great. We're going to have free benefits. And there'll be that, what was it, that one representative from Georgia who thought that um, Guam was going to flip over if we put too many <laughs> service members on the island. Yes. Those islands are very <laughs> topsy-turvy. They're tipsy. Not in a drunken kind of way, Tim. They're um, just tipsy. You just put too much weight on them. Northern California, there was someone that started a petition trying um, in Northern California to try and separate Northern California from Southern California because Northern California isn't completely insane. <laughs> like, uh, we don't want to be a part of this anymore. Well, there, there's a part of trying to break California into three or four states. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been out there for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, a Southern part, a middle part, a uh, Northern part, and maybe even a Eastern part because a lot of the farming communities in the Easter side are much more conservative. Yeah. They're also less densely populated, which mm -hmm. gives them zero control in the yeah. legislature. It's similar to uh, part of Washington, Washington state. Washington, yeah. Eastern wanting, Washington wants to join Idaho. Uh, they want to join Idaho. <laughs> yes, they want to join Idaho. They're the only people that want to join Idaho. They want to join Idaho. They very much look forward to Idaho. <laughs> How crazy do you have to be to be like, do I want to stick with the beach? Or do I want to go be with the potato people? I don't think it's the beach. <laughs> I think it's the bigger cities yeah, on the west coast well, that's of, why. Yeah. Of, like, that run the state. And like, I so don't they'd rather divorce themselves mm -hmm. from like the beautiful, yes. pristine, beachy part. I don't, don't want to be a part of it. I to join leave. the farmland of Idaho. Yes. Just because they're not crazy. Uh, tomorrow morning is the morning show. Yep. Tomorrow afternoon, you, Troy, Blake, probably tomorrow Lenny. Tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Uh, we'll Maybe be Lenny. On. We'll see. Um, well, I'll let Troy know that uh, Lenny is invited. Mm -hmm. So you will have a, a whole host of people. I would definitely recommend uh, movie trivia from the 70s or TV oh, I'm show doing, trivia. I'm doing pop culture trivia. Yeah. It's going to be 70s, 80s, and um, maybe I'll throw in some 90s. It, that's definitely where I'm going with trivia. I, so, Blake, if you're watching, yes. this is your one warning. Yes. Do your research. Do your research, Blake. <laughs> I was walking out of the city building earlier today talking to Troy and Blake mm -hmm. was walking by and I yeah. just handed the phone to Blake and say something to your dad. It freaked Troy out. He didn't know why Blake <laughs> and I were together and where we were and what was going on. What's happening? Oh, we're baptizing Blake. Yes. <laughs> well, I should have said that. <laughs> right? I a hundred percent should have said that. <laughs> I, so funny. now that you've said completely blew my opportunity. <laughs> Missed opportunity. I think Blake probably would have had a heart attack too. I, I don't know. know. He'd be like, what's happening? <laughs> that's two blevins is it would have yeah. woke up in ICU. Yeah. From the same joke, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Both of them would have had. That sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, Amanda and the crew will be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday. Happy trails, we got a Travel bunch safe. of guests coming up for you guys because there's a bunch of cool things going on and there's yeah. people that want to talk to you. So hang in there. Uh, yes, we got that. Do. We'll see you. Bye.